All right, here we are back again with Learning the Timeline Window of EDIUS, Part 2. Let's open up our program. Let's first of all take a look at this little section here that we already have on our timeline. It's uh, two interviews, a mother and a daughter. Let's maybe first of all bring these two together. And we might even uh, put a little dissolve between the two. Okay, so there we have... Uh, a nice uh, interview segment, uh, mother and daughter talking about something. And uh, as we look over to our left-hand column here, we see that the interview statements currently are in our music track. And uh, so if we want to try and keep things organized, we could still at this point move that audio up to probably the narration track would be the best. And and we can open up that track, remember, just by hitting the little arrow here, we can open that up. And just notice that at any point we can change uh, which track the audio is residing on without causing any real damage. So now our interview audio is up on our narration track. We might even rename our track to be narration and interviews. All right, let's maybe throw on some music. Find something that's appropriate for an interview. So let's uh, put that on our music track. Now, as we listen to the two together, we see that the music is way too overpowering. So we need to reduce the volume on the music track. So how do we do that? Well, as we examine our music track closely, we'll see that there is two lines that are going through it. Uh, it might be very difficult to see, but there is an orange or amber line that is going through our audio clip, as well as a blue line. The top one, the amber one, is our audio level. The blue one is our pan level. Now, in order to change our audio levels on our music track or change our pan, we need to, first of all, turn on the ability to do that. And you'll see that over in our left-hand column here. There, it's grayed out at the moment. By default, all of them come uh, grayed out. If you, if you look carefully, you'll see that it says vol pan, standing for volume and panning. If we click on it once, we'll see that we have selected the option to be able to change our volume. And if we click on it again, we'll see that we are now able to change our panning. What we want to do is just change the volume level. So let's select that. You can just toggle through these by continuing to click on those. It goes from grayed out to volume to pan to back to grayed out. Uh, but what we want is to be able to show the volume uh, highlighted, and now we can reduce the volume of the clip. However, there is a little trick to that. If we were to just point at our amber line and try to drag that down, we'll see that we're only going to drag down one point in the audio. And, you know, we don't want to go to 10 different points to drag down our audio. We want to do it all in one sweep. How do we do that? Well, the trick to doing that is to, before we point to the amber line, the volume line, is to first of all press down on your Alt key. Now, with our Alt key held down, now when we point to this amber line and click on it with our left mouse button, and then we drag it up and down, we can see that we can change our audio levels that way. If we moved it up, we would be increasing our volume. When we slide it down, we will be decreasing the volume. And if you watch the little white square there, you, you can tell exactly how much you're gaining as you go up. You bring it to the top, you're right at 12 dB gain. But if we slide it down, we'll see that we are reducing the volume by 16, 17, 19, 21 dB. Now let's try playing that again. That might be a little low. We could maybe bring it up a little bit. And you'll notice that we can do that on the fly while the time, the playhead is playing. We can move that audio track up and down to kind of get a sense of where's the best place to put it. 
And what we might want to do is start out the piece uh, a little louder. And that's where we might want to uh, approach this without holding the Alt key down. You'll notice that without the Alt key down, when you point to that amber line and click on it with your mouse, you'll see that you're setting a point on that audio level. These are called nodes. And as you add a node to your audio track, now when you lift this up, you're only gonna be moving that part where there's a node. So now we can start out our music track with a certain level of audio. And then as it comes closer to the interviews, the audio level is going to drop down. Now we probably would want to start the interview a little bit quicker. And so we could grab both of these clips just by lassoing them and slide them over. And because the music falls off um, naturally, we could bring in this interview clip a little sooner. And I see we have a lot of dead space there at the beginning, so we can trim that back and maybe grab both of them again and slide it across and play it again. Well, as we listen to it, we might say, that's okay, that's still a little loud. Let's add another node there and drop this audio down even further than it was than it does naturally. And what we'd probably want to do here is find a little piece of video that kind of sets up the interview. And so we'd go for a nice scenic shot or a shot, uh, a, a kind of a wide establishing shot of the, of the uh, home in which this interview is being done. Now, there are many ways of adding clips to your timeline window. Uh, and we are going to show you all of the different types of styles of editing uh, in, the, in the next few videos. But as we are working on this tutorial, I'm just going to use my favorite style of editing, and that's kind of the drag and drop method. And we'll just drop that clip right down on video track one. Uh, we see that right now our audio track is being pointed to our music track. In a few moments, we'll explain why that is happening. If we want our audio to go to audio track one, where the ambient audio is supposed to go, we can keep scrolling down with our mouse until our mouse pointer is actually pointing to the ambient audio track. And then we can slide it into place and let our mouse button go. So now we have a nice establishing shot that will lead into our interview. We might want to throw on a dissolve here. Now, in just the same way that we can reduce the level of audio on an audio track, we can also reduce the amount of video that shows uh, by selecting our mix track on the video track. You'll notice that there's a little button here. It's grayed out by default, but if you click on it, you'll see that we can turn the mix track on. And now, in just the same way that we worked with the audio level track, our, our amber line here, we can do the same with our video track by affecting or, or manipulating the blue line that shows up here in our mix track. For example, if we wanted to reduce the level of video that shows through to 50%, well, by holding down our Alt key, before we point and click to the blue line, we will now bring down the whole video track to 50%. Or you could shut it right off for that matter. You could set it to any level that you want. You might wonder, well, why would you ever want to do that? Well, if you're working with several layers of video, you might want to independently set any one track to be a certain percentage to help give you the mood or effect that you're looking for as you mix tracks together. One way that you might use this is to to fade up from black. The video tracks by default are zero black. So if we were to point to our blue line and select a node here, you know, without holding the alt key down, just point to your blue track and, and click on it and you'll see that you create a node and then go to the first point on your video track, which also has a node. It's hard to see, but there is a node there. 
the first frame by default comes with a node, well, you can grab hold of that and drag it down so that now you have a natural fade up from black. The timeline is black. You've brought your first frame down to 0% uh, video. And then as it plays along, it will gradually fade up from black to go to 100% video. Now, of course, there are many other ways that you can fade from black, but that is one way that you can do it using the tools of your timeline. Now, let's take a look at how we can mute any track, uh, either video or audio. It can be shut off. Let's maybe throw on a couple of other video tracks here. Let's say that we want to work with our timeline without hearing that music track. Well, what we can do is mute the music track, but leave the audio on all of the other tracks on. And how we do that is point down to our music track, and you'll see a little speaker there. Well, if you click on that, you'll see it turns to gray, and also the audio track that you are affecting is kind of grayed out as well. So we can very quickly visually tell that we're not going to hear that track as we work with our timeline. And you can do the same also with the video track. You'll notice we've thrown on some clips here uh, just to show you how we could do that with video in the same way that we do with audio. Let's say we're working along with uh, three or four uh, video tracks, but at any given time, you can also mute video tracks that you might have on your timeline. Bring them back, just click on them again. All right, uh, you might have noticed that there is a button at the very far left of this left-hand column that can <clears throat> be moved up and down independent of the tracks and can be placed alongside any of the tracks that you're working with. We could have this button right alongside of track 4 or track 5, um, track 1. And you'll notice that we can also do the same type of thing with our video layers, we can select this button here and have it lined up next to video track 2 or video track 3, video track 4. So you might be wondering, well, what's happening? What difference does it make where these are pointed? Let's maybe uh, collapse our tracks here and let's notice what happens when we have our buttons uh, pointing to or mapping particular tracks. If we were to grab a clip and bring it down to our timeline and point the video to video track one, we will see that the corresponding audio, the ambient audio of that clip that was recorded with the video, is by default pointing to the uh, track where we have our audio button pointed to. You could say that we have mapped the audio to track one, audio track one. Notice what happens, let's just delete that. Notice what happens if we move our audio uh, down one layer so that it is now mapping audio track two. And we drag our clip and point it to video track one. We'll see that our audio now by default is landing on audio track two. And you know, this works all the way down. Well, let's point it to five and do that again, point our video again to video track one and notice that the audio is wanting to go to audio track five. So you can see how you could be very deliberate as to where you want your video to land by pointing your video to a particular video track and pointing your audio button to map a particular audio track. Let's say we want our video to land on video track three, but have our audio land on track one. Well, now when we drag down to the timeline, we'll see that as we point to video track three, the, the audio is going to one. Now you'll notice that when we are using the drag and drop method, that we are not restricted to pointing our clip to the track that we have mapped. If we point it to any other video track, EDIUS will still accept it, even though we haven't mapped 
the track that we drop it on. And so this uh, method or this process of mapping tracks using these buttons here really uh, only become important when you are using the three-point method of editing, the four-point style of editing. And again, we will come back to this three-point, four-point style of editing. But just to give you a quick idea of what we're talking about, we know already about setting our in and out points in our play monitor. Well, three-point editing means that you also set an in point on your video side. And you'll notice that under the record monitor, there are in and outs as well. We could set up four points if we wanted to by uh, placing our playhead anywhere on our timeline and hitting an out point. And then we'll see that this is a four point edit. We've set up an in and out on our play monitor. That's two points. And we've set up an in and out on our record monitor or our timeline. And that's four points. Now, instead of using the drag and drop method, we could use one of these buttons here under our play monitor. One, the amber one, will give you an option to overwrite to timeline. The blue one gives you an insert to timeline. Using either one of these options by setting up a three or four point uh, edit we'll notice that when we click one of these, it is going to send the clip directly to the in and outs that we have set on the timeline, and it's going to send them to the video track and the audio track that we have mapped with our buttons. Don't worry if this is just a little bit confusing at this point. We will spend more time in future tutorials showing you how to do the different styles of edits using three point, four point, or just using the drag and drop method, using the overwrite to timeline as opposed to the insert to time. We'll, we'll talk a lot about that in future tutorials. Right now, I just want to show you that by sliding this button up and down, you can be very specific about which audio or video track you want your media to land on. Let's remove that uh, and notice what happens if we have our A track deselected. We'll see that all we're going to do is add the video. Unless our mouse should happen to slide into the audio area, then you will be overriding the option that we have just selected. Uh, let's use the other method where we're just overriding to timeline we'll notice that only the video shows up. And by the same token, if we were to turn off the video by clicking on it, now when we send our video clip that we have up here in our preview monitor, when we send it to the timeline, only the audio shows up. So you can see how you can shut off audio or video and determine what you are going to send to your timeline by having these selected on or off. All right, well, I believe that we should probably close it off for now here at this point. And uh, in our next tutorial, we will wrap things up on learning the timeline window of EDIUS.